me, guys. This is Bo. We're back in the house again. We're going to talk some hockey in Detroit Red Wings. We got Bill Houlihan from Abel to Iserman. How you doing, Bill? I'm doing fine, Bill. How are you? Hey, real good, real good. I've been talking to a bunch of hockey coaches that are getting ready to see their teams start beating each other up and get ready for the at least college season. I could only imagine what's going on for the Red Wings. Yeah, it's, uh, it's getting pretty exciting. The, uh, the teams actually, the, the, the big guys, uh, take to the ice in Traverse City. On Thursday, actually, they'll show up in TC for physicals on Thursday, and then uh, they'll start workouts on Friday. Right now, they've got a big prospects tournament going on there. Um, so a lot of young kids have been playing, uh, most of whom don't have much of a chance to make the team. But uh, the Red Wings have a pretty good farm system, so it's been pretty exciting. I, I was like the, uh, the those earlier games in hockey. I went to a couple of them, and you see a lot of hitting on those and a lot of aggressive play and a lot of young talent. Uh, in the prospects tournament, absolutely, because a lot of those guys uh, realize that if they're going to make the team, they're going to make the team as a kind of a fourth liner, a grinder. And uh, so what most head coaches who are probably are sitting up in the stands are watching for are guys who are going to put it out there and, uh, and lay some wood to people. you got to love that, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. You wish hockey was had more of that during the regular season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, we may see a little bit more of that this year. The 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 refs may uh, I mean, they may loosen up a little bit. Don't be surprised if you see a little bit more uh, let go uh, as far as uh, between the whistles and a little more hitting. But uh, we'll, we'll see. I mean, who knows what stance the refs are going to take this year? That's probably going to be determined around November when uh, the players get used to however the refs are calling it. Absolutely. Now we're going to digress a little bit. I've got a couple email messages from people that want you to talk more about your site, what you do, what's involved in it, uh, and just sort of the background of the setup for yourself. Uh, there's a guy in Canada. I did not know we had Canadian brothers that liked Red Wings, but apparently we do. And we've got guys down in Florida and one guy in Detroit. So uh, there you go. Go ahead and explain about what exactly you do in your blog and who's the characters and personalities. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, well, uh, my blog, of course, is uh, Abel the Iserman, and uh, I, am what, I am kind of an affiliate of the biggest hockey blog out there, which is a uh, place by the name of Kukla's Corner, and you can find that by just typing in K-U-K-L-A-S-K-O-R-N-E-R.com. And uh, then uh, right at the top of the banner is Abel the Iserman. I'm, I'm wing-specific, man, I'm telling you. Uh, there is nothing... Uh, there's not NHL general. We're talking wing-specific stuff. So if you're a Red Wing fan, it's the place to go. Uh, I don't put much stock in fact, research, statistics, or anything that is uh, too overly serious. I'm a pretty sarcastic guy, and uh, that's usually what most of my takes are. And you know what? I think in sarcasm, though, you have honesty and you have passion, and there are facts mixed in there because you, if you're passionate, you've got to know what you're talking about. Yeah, I tell you, that's, uh, and that's hockey and that's hockey bloggers, man. And most of us are, most of us have a little bit of sense of humor to us, and uh, you'll find that that's the, the common theme among the hockey bloggers. And I'll tell you something, the guys who come to my site, uh, you don't let your guard down for a second because they will friggin' blow you up. Yeah, we have, um, I blog on a lot of different sites across concerning sports and mixed martial arts and, and everything, and, uh, Every once in a while, there'll be somebody making a, co- a take, and we just have a field day just ripping them. I mean, it's all good. I mean, really, it's all in good fun, but it, it's fun just to rip on somebody for having such a wimpy take on things. Well, if you look at most bloggers, where do they get their start? You know, by going to different message boards and things like that and uh, expressing opinions there, and then finally you get to the point where you uh, like to write enough so that you come up with something on your own, and blogging's free. You know, I mean, there's, you don't have to pay anything. You you write your opinion, you express yourself however you want, and uh, and then if people read, they do. If they don't, they don't. And if you're an Avalanche fan, then you can just kiss my ass and keep going because I don't want you anywhere near my side anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm trying to figure out why there's so much love with the Avalanche. I I know why as far as in hockey, but you got to have a little story there for the Avalanche. You got to share it us. You got to you know tell us now. Oh, I've got several stories, of course. But, you know the genesis of the rivalry between Wing fans and Avalanche fans uh, starts back in '96 uh, when Claude Lemieux uh, knocked uh, Chris Draper from behind into the boards, and you know, and, and disfigured him essentially for a few months. And you know what really gets me though, Bo? The one thing that sticks out in my mind is a picture that uh, I've got on my site from time to time. 
of a woman, I think, standing behind the Red Wing bench in Game 6 of the Western Conference Finals. And this is after the Red Wings had gone 42 years since winning the Stanley Cup, all right? The, and this, by the way, was the first year in Denver. First year of the Colorado Avalanche in Denver. So there's this woman. As the seconds are ticking down on the Red Wings getting knocked out, she's got a sign-up behind Steve Eiserman that says 1955 Chokers. And I'll tell you what. <laughs> There hasn't been a day that's gone by that I have not despised the Avalanche fan after that. It's not so much the players, it's not so much the team or the organization, it's the fans of the Avalanche who just make me want to throw up. It's yeah, I feel the same. So you got passion for that. See, my passion is I hate the fake eyes. I, yeah. I, I, you know, that championship the fake eyes won against Miami um, was bought and paid for. I fully believe that. Um, they had paid felons on the squad. I mean... And, you know, I'm not a huge Big Ten guy, but I do like Michigan State. I do like Penn, and I do like Wissy. I'm not a Michigan guy, um, but I just, just, I, I love to hate the Buckeyes. I just, it's just, I love it. It's awesome. Well, I firmly believe that, uh, that when we were born in either Michigan or Ohio, you know, you've got a choice to make. You can either take the path of righteousness north, or you can take the sewer <laughs> south to Columbus. And those who choose to uh, take that route into Columbus have only themselves to blame when they're followed by a nasty stench the rest of their life, whereas those of us who go north, whether it be to Michigan, Michigan State, you know, obviously we're followed by purity and light, and uh, we have that going for us. Yeah, we have, you know, we seriously have that going, because they got Toledo, and we got the Upper <laughs> Peninsula, which has hockey, so... Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that story. Yeah, uh, we won't give you Toledo, but we're going to give you the Upper Peninsula. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is full of copper and iron. Yeah, that was a good move, Ohio. You, you go ahead and keep Toledo. <laughs> and uh, I, I think what it is, is too, that I like is that I would love to see something in Columbus go on as far as hockey to have that cross-state rivalry. That would be just wonderful to see Michigan. See, they have a team, Bo. They've got the Columbus Blue Jackets, otherwise known as the BJs. Well, I, I, and, uh, how can you not like a team named the BJs? <laughs> and, plus, you know, the Red Room fans, <laughs> we get eight BJs a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? It, I, don't, I didn't think, you know, I, I knew they had a squad down there. And I'd stop picking on the athletes because I really feel that everybody who plays in a professional arena is a great college player. And when yeah. they come to the pros, some of them can step up, some of them can't because it is a totally change. So, you know, this is all ton in cheek, but this is always Ohio jokes. But you know what? I was kind of thought they were like our, our you know, our, our practice squad every time we played them. I tell you what, it started out that way. It started out that way, but the last couple of years, uh, Columbus gives the wings a game every time. And, there, and there's something else, too. There are a lot of uh, passionate Columbus Blue Jacket fans. Oh, yeah. There are, great, uh, there are some great Blue Jacket bloggers. And I'll tell you a couple now. There's one, there's one site called End of the Bench. You check that out. Another one, um, the Army of Ohio is a good one. And uh, those guys are passionate hockey fans, man. They haven't had a team there too long, but they latched onto it. And uh, those are a good couple of blogs. And that, that fan base, while they are from Ohio and admittedly slow, they do like their <laughs> hockey. And they throw that arena down there in Columbus. You know what? And, and you know what? The one thing I do like a love about Ohio fans is they are so knowledgeable about sports. They're, they're almost better than most other states as far as every sport, not just the big ones, but the track stars and divers. I mean, yeah. I'm just memorized. I mean, they are. They're, pretty, they're very literate. They're one of the most literate states I've been into as far as all their sports. But you know what? That just grinds me on top of it, so it just makes me want to hate them more.